I'm Dwayne Caldwell. Welcome to Interlocking 101. What is interlocking? Simply put, interlocking is when one print of a movie is run simultaneously between two or more projectors. But since there are many different ways of performing an interlock, and no two booths are alike, rather than concentrate on how to set up an interlock, we will be demonstrating how one works. In this case, we will be interlocking a single print from projector number 8 to 9. The long way. Yes, that's right. We will be sending this entire print through all 16 projectors of this theater complex, beginning with projector number 8, then going to 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, and then finally coming to theater number 9. With only seconds left until the program start time, let's go to the status panels. And they're off. You may have noticed that each projector started at a slightly different time than the rest. The reason is because this theater complex does not have any functioning interlock circuitry, and this interlock is being initiated solely upon the accuracy of the individual start timers. We're here at number 8, waiting for the first cue to pass through the projector to start the show. Although the igniter did not strike the lamp quite fast enough, the show is now officially running in the first of 16 auditoriums. We head now to number 7 where I am awaiting the next start. Due to the incredible amount of leader that is associated with this length of an interlock, allowing all 16 Xenos to ignite with the motors would have been disastrous to the electric dowsers. To save the dowsers, I am manually turning on each power supply as the first trailer nears each projector. You can see here where the film enters the payout side of the platter, makes its way through the projector and through the take-up side of the platter, heading back up to the interlock rollers on the ceiling. You will notice there are no accumulator rollers of any sort on the ceiling. For this demonstration, we are disengaging the top deck of each platter and utilizing the take-up arm as an accumulator. This only provides an absolute maximum of two seconds error in either direction. Due to the use of this incredibly strong Kodak vision leader, if one of the start times had been more than two seconds out of sync with the rest, certain disaster would have resulted at the start of the interlock. We now pass projectors number 6 and 5 and are headed back towards number 4, 3, and 2, which are located on the right. This entire shot, as you can see, is being photographed handheld with no editing whatsoever for the disbelievers that one print of a movie can actually be projected simultaneously through this many projectors. In the interest of time, this shot is being performed as quickly as possible, and we apologize for the shaky camera movements. Stills of this demonstration are available for more scrutinizing viewing in the Projection Picture Warehouse on the FilmTech website. Number two here is the last projector in the north booth. From here the interlock starts to get a little bit tricky as there are a grand total of four booths in this 16 screen complex. As the film navigates this corner, it must travel down this lengthy hallway through a doorway to reach a temporarily set up makeup table in the upstairs lobby. This makeup table performs the necessary twist to route the film into the second booth which houses projector number one. As you can see, from this point the film must travel through two more doorways to enter this projection room. Here you can view another status panel. As of this point, the film is only playing in auditoriums number 7 and 8, as can be seen by the solid green lights. Normally only two interlock rollers are utilized per projector, but in this particular instance the use of four rollers was absolutely necessary. Alignment of these makeup tables is critical due to the top of the door frame versus the half wall, which could cause significant film damage if not aligned properly. As we exit the second booth, we come to another makeup table. This makeup table turns the film around yet another corner and shoots it across the upstairs lobby a full 80 feet. Although you cannot see it yet, at the other side of this area is the third and final makeup table. If you look closely at the film here, you will see a piece of white tape that is a marker for us. The table will be explained in a minute, but serves now as a convenient marker to demonstrate yet again that the film is actually moving and this setup was not staged. As the film travels through this third makeup table, it is directed into the third booth which houses projector number 16. Here we can view another status panel showing that the film is now on screen in auditoriums number 8, 7, 6, and 5. This booth is a mirror image of the last booth except for the difficulty in threading the two interlock rollers that feed the film into and out of the platter. To understand, look at the half wall on the left side of the stairway here. 
The only way to reach those two rollers is for a projectionist with a death wish to stand at the end of this half wall and stretch outward over the drop in order to place the film into the rollers on the ceiling. We now arrive back at the third makeup table where additional rollers will redirect the film into the fourth booth. Earlier it was mentioned that this theater has no functioning interlock circuitry. This is due to the fact that only select pairs of projectors were hardwired together during the initial installation of this theater complex. Later the CA Link computer software program was added, but due to the existing wiring in this booth, the computerized interlock control does not work. Although the status panels demonstrated that each projector started at slightly different times, this close-up shot of the interlock screen, which does not display any links, provides further proof that the CA Link is not being used to drive this interlock. Here the film runs through number 15 and starts making its way through the fourth booth, counting down to its final resting place on the left, number 9. A couple of minutes ago, a piece of white tape on the film was pointed out. This tape is utilized for the threading procedure, as this one continuous interlock actually started out as three completely separate stretches of leader. Due to the amount of rollers the film must be passed over to thread, the film becomes virtually impossible to pull after several hundred feet of leader is run over dozens of rollers without entering a projector. For this reason, projectors number 15 to 9 were threaded with one stretch of leader. Next, projectors number 2 to 15 were threaded with another stretch of leader. Finally, projectors number 8 to 2 were threaded with a third stretch of leader. At this point, the leaders were spliced together and the film was threaded into all 16 projectors in reverse order, starting from number 9 all the way to number 8. Once threaded, there is very little stress on the film, as can be seen by the sagging loops of film between the interlock rollers. A total of 2200 feet of threading leader was required to join all 16 projectors together and the film must pass more than 200 rollers to reach from one end to the other. It takes just over 20 minutes from the time that the first trailer on number 8 starts until that same first trailer starts on number 9. The interlock took approximately 45 minutes to fully thread all 16 machines and requires 150 feet of additional tail leader to protect the end of the credits. The entire system was designed and set up by Brad Miller over a period of a little over 4 hours. Here we arrive at our final destination being projector number 9. On this platter the film is taken up as normal. It will be approximately another 14 minutes until the film reaches this projector. It's just that easy. And with that, 16 screens and 20 minutes later, the show starts on number 9. Digital cinema will never be this fun.